So yesterday, the shortlist for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction was announced. Very exciting. And today, there was an article in The Guardian uh, discussing it with the headline uh, that said, The Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist led by Mantel, Evaristo, and O'Farrell. Uh, but uh, I think they just sort of decided that these are the most popular and well-known authors. I, I think it's important to remember that there are six authors on the shortlist, and really, any of these books can win. Hey everyone, how's it going? So yesterday I did do a live video with Anna on her channel and I'll link that video below if you want to watch it. But I thought I would make another video uh, chatting about it and discussing about it because I'd, I'd like to know all of your thoughts um, about the shortlist for this year, what you're planning to read, uh, what you're excited to, to read next, what you're disappointed wasn't on the shortlist and you know all that that good stuff. And I do have a few more thoughts about these books and, and yeah, I'm reading them so uh, I'm gonna go through them all and talk about them. I'm, I'm probably most excited and happy to see Weather on, on the list uh, just because I absolutely adored this novel. I think it's it's so brilliant, really speaks to our times now, all about a librarian and modern life in America. Um, and it's both funny and poignant and uh, and and sad and really touching and and moving and yeah, all of all of the good stuff. So I'm really glad that the prize is giving it more attention and that more people will be reading this and also it's a very short novel it won't take you that long to read it but uh but as i said with anna like i'm i'm really excited to reread this because i think there'll be more to discover in it and we should keep in mind that the 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 judges for this prize will be rereading all of the the short list and they have a lot more time to do that you know i think thankfully um, now that they have a lot more time to do it because mentel is on the the short list uh so uh yeah i'm i think a second reading of this will bring out the strength of this novel even more um, this time. And, and I, I think I would like to read it aloud to my partners. I think it'll be really enjoyable one to, to read aloud. So I'd suggest um, that you might want to try doing that as well while you're reading it. You know, maybe if, if you're alone or if you want to read it to, to someone um, in your life uh, that you're, you know, sequestered inside with uh, during these these uh, these troubling times, as everyone likes to say. So, uh, so yeah, very happy to, to see this. Also, coincidentally, just yesterday, I finished reading uh, A Thousand Chips and uh, and I, you know, I had slight issues with it because there have been so many mythological retellings about this. I've read uh, Circe and Pat Barker's uh, novel and uh, and also Colm Toybin's novel House of Names uh, because it goes uh, into the, the family of Agamemnon, the um, part there are some sections told from his wife's perspective and so yeah it um it uh yeah i mean it covers a lot of the same ground of those tales but i've i found it really enjoyable still and also really interesting how uh Haynes ties all of these different tales together and makes this sort of overall narrative of what's driving um, all these tragic events that are occurring, all these wars and, and fights and, and familial battles um, that are occurring. And uh, it's really clever how she does that and um, really enjoyable to see how, how that all plays out. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot more to, to get from this. And, and uh, you know, it's, um, it's interesting how there are um, a couple novels I think that are almost like self-consciously feminist on this you know this and Evaristo's novel how you know it's self consciously making a place um, for women in literature that wasn't there otherwise, which I think is sort of important to note because it's the Women's Prize. Um, but it does so in a really interesting way. You know, it doesn't idealize um, the, the full spectrum of the female characters' lives in, in this. It shows them as really complex, um, interesting human beings that uh, that have strengths as well as weaknesses, of course, because, you know, that's what human beings are. And so, um, you know, I think it, it makes a really strong feminist point that, you know, that uh, that female characters who have been, you know, maybe either side characters in the past or, or you know, sort of relegated to, to just a, a footnote in the, the history of these um, mythologies uh, that, uh, you know, that there can be full 
fully rounded characters. And, um, and I really like how, how these books in particular seem to be making uh, those statements. So, so yeah, I would still recommend reading A Thousand Ships if you're a bit wary about it. And, and it's just, yeah, very enjoyable novel. So, um, so I am, I am happy to, to see this on, on the list. Although, you know, I probably would have preferred to see, um, there's a couple other novels I would have really liked to have seen instead, uh, you know, namely, uh, Actress by Anne Enright, just because I personally adored this novel. I mean, I don't think it's her, her best novel ever and probably looking at it objectively probably not the the strongest book on the list but I personally just loved it and enjoyed it so much um, and I think she's a brilliant writer and and she does say some really important and interesting things uh, in this novel and also quite disappointed not to see The Dutch House on the list just because I, I, yeah, I love this novel so much it's so moving and touching and uh, yeah really wonderful and uh, yeah beautiful, beautiful book. I, I would still like to read Red at the Bone and uh, Gin P Patrol um, from the, the long list because, uh, yeah, these are two that I've been really eager to get to. So one that I still like to read regardless, even though they're they're not on the short list. So that's that's sort of my feelings about that. Um, and I am very happy to see Dominicana on the list because I haven't read it yet, but it's one that, yeah, I'm also very eager to get to. So this will really push me to, you know, read it sooner rather than than later. And uh, and I've heard such great things about it. Um, yeah, I, I number of people have been reading the entire long list feel really um, passionate about it. But then as Anna pointed out, you know, a lot of there's some dissenting opinions about it as well. So I'm really interested to see what both uh, me and Anna make about it and other readers as as we're all reading the shortlist over this extended period of time before the winner is announced in September. Uh, so yeah, I'm very excited to, to read this and find out what, what I think. Uh, so that'll be um, really good. But then also I'm glad that I'm going to have a push to, to read The Mirror in the Light because I did start reading this and I just felt like after the marathon of catching up with Wolf Hall and bring up the bodies, I just didn't have the strength to, to carry on with such a long novel again and, and in this extended series. And But a point I would like to make about, I know a lot of people are... Um, are reading this by listening to the audiobook of it. And uh, and I've been doing that for, as I, I've mentioned in the past, doing that for Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies as well. And something I'd like to say, because I, you know, I've been, I've been mixing, um, listening to an audio and reading the physical book when I'm sat at home. And so I think that's a good way to do it, of sort of mixing up with, um, with those. But, uh, but I would say with the audio books, um, the first audio book of Wolf Hall, um, that's narrated by Simon Slater, and I really enjoyed the um, the audiobook narrator for that. I think he he really brought out all the the characters and voices, and um, yeah, and and sort of really effectively dramatized um, that that novel. But then I would say with Bring Up the Bodies, um, the second novel, um, which is uh, narrated by Simon Vance, um, I didn't enjoy that audio narration as much. I felt like the way he portrayed the characters um, just didn't really jibe with how I was seeing them in my mind, um, which is a tricky thing with audiobooks because I think the the way that a book is performed in an audiobook can um, really uh, sway how you're imagining the characters and and uh, and imagining you know the dialogue in particular and and um, and so yeah I felt like with um, that second book I wish I'd just read it as a physical book because particularly with the way he portrays Henry and Anne Boleyn in in that I just it didn't really feel right to me. Um, so, uh, so, so, yeah. Um, a after a while, I just stopped listening to the audiobook and, and finished reading the the physical book um, in itself. Um, just so, yeah, I could just have it all the words in my mind rather than yeah having somebody else's interpretation on them. So, yeah. And I don't know how um, the the third book, the the um, the mirror and the light, is narrated by somebody else, another actor entirely. So, um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we find that if you have any opinions about the audiobooks of these three in particular, because I know, yeah, a lot of people have been catching up and reading them um, on audiobook, um, how your thoughts and feelings uh, about that are. Another thing I'd like to note is many, many years ago, I saw Hilary Mantel uh, give an interview um, before she had, I think, even started reading Wolf 
writing Wolf Hall. Um, I, she, um, I saw her in an interview talking about the issue of audiobooks and reading books aloud. And she said she, um, she made this interesting statement where she said she thought that uh, for audiobooks, an author should entirely rewrite a book um, before it's narrated on audiobook um, because it is a different experience from just reading a physical book. Um, I don't know how she would want to rewrite it in a more sort of dramatic, almost uh, like play like way maybe but uh but yeah she did say that and uh but i assume she's not going to actually embark on that endeavor because to to uh, rewrite entire yeah sort of this trilogy um which totals in over 2,000 pages uh, would be quite a feat and probably take her another 15 years or so to, to actually do that. So, um, so yeah, that was just a funny thing I, I wanted to, to note in addition to, to that. And uh, yeah, and uh, also I, I am really happy to see Girl, Woman, Other on the, the list, even though it won, co-won the Booker Prize last year. I think it, you know, deserves even more attention. And I know a lot of people, um, like Anna has said in, in the past, um, don't follow the Booker Prize as much. And so, you know, when in the past, when Milkman won, Anna didn't read that until it was listed for the Women's Prize. And then it was turned out to be one of her favorite books of the year. So I'm curious to see how many people... Uh, chose not to read this um, just because it won the Booker Prize, but then maybe now we'll give it a try because it is on the, the Women's Prize. So um, so let me know if, if you feel that way too, um, or if you're hoping that this might win and that uh, Bernadine might have her own moment in the spotlight all by herself winning the prize. I mean, that would be really exciting to see, but also, yeah, sort of unprecedented because uh, winner of the Booker Prize has never also won the Women's Prize. So, yeah, that would be that would be really interesting to see. And, you know, and I feel in a way, you know, maybe it doesn't need the attention as much as some of the other books, like, you know, whether um, it would be it'd be great to see that get a lot more attention from women winning a prize but you know really it is about the best book and so hopefully the judges are sticking to that and just wanting to pick um the the best book they think but uh, but although if um you do um remember you might have uh, seen uh when i was chatting with simon and anna at the 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 uh, women's prize party long list party um we sort of spontaneously picked what we thought might win this year and i did pick winner uh weather 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 to win <laughs> i'm getting a little tripped up on my words but yeah i did pick win weather to win so it'll be interesting to see if you know maybe it'll turn out i was right but uh but i i yeah very happy that this is also on the list and then there's hamnet which i'm currently reading and hasn't totally gripped me yet. I'm enjoying it. I think it's really good, but I, I just have had such high expectations for this because everyone was saying, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. It'll win all the prizes this year. And and, and I'm like, mm, it's it's good. I'm enjoying it. Um, and it's also very close to the bone because it, it concerns a, a plague um, during the, the 1600s. And so, yeah, it's, um, it's sort of talking about... Uh, like how theaters are being shut and uh, and people are are being very sick and yeah and so um yeah I'm I'm funny it's it's quite a uh, uh, coincidental that a few of these books really touch on the plague I mean Hilary Mantel's novel does that as well uh but but also um a thousand ships um, talks about it as well when the the gods are all getting together and talking about how they want to uh, wreak havoc upon humankind and and uh, and how they they consider doing a, a plague um, but uh, and and releasing a plague but uh, but say that uh, really that usually only affects a lot of the, the older population and and that and when I read that line I was just like oh that's a little too close to the bone for um, these these current times. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I'm I'm hoping still that uh, that Hamnet will grip me and and I'll I'll end up loving it. I think you know that quite often happens with books where I'll just be reading along and and thinking oh this is good um, and then there'll just be a moment where I'll sort of click and I'll be like wow this really is great. Um, I'm hoping I'll have a moment like that because I know a lot of other people have. So yeah, let me know all of your thoughts on the shortlist, uh, both uh, the the books as a group on a whole and uh, any of the books in particular 
particular you want to um, set out and talk about that might be your favorites or the ones that you're really rooting for? Um, are you, uh, would you be planning to, to reread any of these books as well? Would you be willing to give it a chance just because we do have much more time to read the shortlist before the winner is announced in September? Um, it'll be because, yeah, it's really interesting when rereading books, um, especially when you've read it relatively recently to to reread it then i think more things come out and yeah you sort of discover more things about it and like i've said i have been wanting to read girl woman other again um just because there's so many characters and uh, yeah so much to to get through and i sort of would feel the same way about a thousand ships i think a rereading of it would really draw it out because uh yeah i got slightly confused by some of the characters in it because there's so many and uh you know they're all greek names and they sort of mix them up together but i know with the mirror and the light you know it'll be sort of the same thing um it's much more in a mode of wolf hall where there's lots of characters a lot going on so it's difficult to keep track of it all and uh yeah it makes me me want to just write out a list of characters so I, I can keep track of them in my mind uh, better. But uh, yeah, I'll stop rambling on. Uh, let me know all of your thoughts below uh, and, uh, and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care, everyone.